Hello birders! Today we're going to take a close look at the Merlin Bird Identification app. This is a cell phone application that was created by the Lab of Ornithology at Cornell. It's free to all users. It's already being used by thousands of bird watchers around the world. Other uh, birders have maybe heard of this but haven't tried it yet, don't know enough about it, and maybe some people are hearing about this for the first time. So come and join me while we walk through how to use this application, uh, when it is a, a good idea to use it, and maybe times when it's not going to be so useful, and we're going to assess how well this application works. So join me while we take a close look at the Merlin app. When you open the Merlin app on your cell phone, it opens to a page with three choices for how to proceed. It, you either start bird ID, push on photo ID, or explore birds. Now let's start with the third of these options, explore birds. This is a fantastic tool for novice uh, birders, for people just getting into this. The old experts, they know what birds are likely to be seen. This would be their thousandth field trip in this area. But if you're new, you don't, you haven't reached that stage. And what comes up on that initial screen is the uh, most likely birds in order of um, in order of occurrence based on people submitted eBird lists. So these are the birds you're most likely to see in the area you're birding in. And this is tremendously helpful. So this greatly narrows down your choices when you're trying to decide uh, what you're seeing. Now, it doesn't go without saying that the bird that's in front of you is gonna be one of the birds on these lists, but probably it is. I, that should be your uh, kind of default. That should be where you start your consideration is you're in a park, you're in this area, you're most likely to see the most common birds as opposed to something rare. Uh, and this is a point I'm gonna make throughout this video. Uh, novice birders should generally not be uh, calling rare birds. You, you sort of have to work up to that. There's a real, it's, it's, birding can be like a treasure hunt and everybody wants to find the treasure on their first day out, but um, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes when you start out. Like you, like you do when you start anything. And so assume that what you see is going to be a common bird. And, and this list shows you the, the common bird. This is really a useful and, and wonderful aspect of this program. Okay, let's go back to the, the front screen and, and let's uh, choose option two. And we're going to skip photo ID because we're going to spend most of this video thinking about photo IDs. If, if you see the bird, but you don't have any way to, to capture an image of the bird, uh, then you simply want to have the computer help you work through the possibilities. So you go to Start Bird ID. And um, this will bring up a screen uh, in which you have to, first of all, tell it where you're birding. So uh, I'm sitting in Auburn, Alabama. So we're going to choose Auburn, Alabama. It needs to know the date because this changes what birds are, are most likely. And, we're, and this is March 19th, so we're going to do today's date. Okay, now we're now the, we're into the computer helping you decide what this bird is. And the first question that you're asked is, what size is your bird? How big is it? Okay, and this is tough. This is tough even for experienced birders. I, I get tricked on every bird watching trip uh, about size. Uh, you can be sure uh, a falcon flying over is huge. It's got to be a peregrine, and then it's something gives you a little perspective, and you realize, no, that's a kestrel. It's not nearly big enough. It's just a size can be really tricky. But you need to do your best here. Um, and you'll get better at this as you get more experience as a birder. Um, you basically have to decide, is it a, a, among the smallest birds, like warbler or sparrow size? Is it... The next stage up, is it like a robin size, like a thrush? Is it the next sort of big step up for birds? Is it like a crow? Uh, 
And then, or is it among the largest birds? Is it up there in the size of a goose or a turkey vulture? And so you, you pick one of these categories. So I, I'm gonna think of a bird that I have commonly in, in my yard. Okay, uh, for this example, um, I'm going to think about uh, a pine siskin. This is a good test for Merlin. Uh, I just had a colleague send me a note inquiring about a, a bird that he saw at his feeder. This is a non-birder uh, biologist, but not a birder. And um, that really all he had was it was small and brown, looked kind of like a sparrow. And, and I guessed pine siskin because there's been a lot of these at feeders this winter and sent him a picture and sure enough, that's what it was. Uh, but that's a human assessor. Let's see what Merlin does. So by any uh, estimate, I think uh, an observer would say a pine siskin's a small bird. I expect almost anybody to get that part of this described accurately. And then, then you're asked by Merlin, what color is the bird? This is hard. Um, and, and this is where uh, novice observers really make it hard for uh, a, a computer application or uh, a person trying to help them to identify the bird because you just you can you can perceive colors that other observers wouldn't think would describe that bird um, you may focus on a color that's not a dominant color but for whatever reason that's what you remember there's a lot of reasons so for um, I think a lot of people that would see a pine siskin in normal uh, lighting, you know, not great lighting and what have you would say it was a brown and white bird and and you very likely wouldn't see the yellow. You got to really look hard to see the yellow on a perched pine siskin. So let's say your impression is a brown and, 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 and yellow bird. That's that's next level. You can do up to three colors in this Merlin query, uh, but brown, uh, brown and white is a reasonable and then it's at your feeder. So eating at the feeder as opposed to swimming on the ground in trees on a wire or soaring or flying okay i believe that's it uh, merlin doesn't ask very many questions and now it's going to take that information and compare it to what is commonly reported at feeders in your area in this case auburn alabama and it it brings up as the most likely choice song sparrow it, well it wasn't a song sparrow but you know, if if you're a novice birder, you may look at that and think, I don't think so, but it could have been. So the first thing I would suggest that you do is look at all the options in, in terms of pictures. So song sparrow, uh, males and there's no dichromatism. Males and females look alike, and young and old look alike. There's really not uh, so much variation within a population of song sparrows. So as we scroll through these, yeah, they're darker and lighter and a little redder or a little less red. But song sparrow, all of these birds have long tails. If you start looking at your pine siskin with a really short little tail and the whole different shape, you probably would get by this. Now, the second choice, pine siskin, I'm sorry, second choice is um, purple finch. You look at the first picture, you say, what the heck? How could that computer think that? It's a red bird. Well, let's scroll over. The female's not a red bird. The female's a brown and white bird. That's a common feeder resident. Uh, but you know, and this one could be hard. I mean, that it, it's a it's a finch in the same family as pine siskin. You'd really like to look at the bill and stuff. But Merlin didn't take you to pine siskin as the first or second choice. Didn't take as the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. Pine siskin is your twelfth choice on this list. And so, I would say Merlin did not do a very good job. Uh, taking you to your bird if you're looking at a pine siskin on your feeder in in Auburn Now there's a lot of reasons for that um, We didn't give it very much information pine siskins are erratic and it's been uh, five or six years since pine siskins have been very common uh, At people's feeder so the database is going to show pine siskin is not very likely averaged across uh, a lot of years um, so uh, but this is this is uh, the, the case with the Merlin app the um, the uh, query based help is is going to help narrow your focus and get you thinking, but don't expect it to automatically lead you to the bird. Don't think that first choice is your bird necessarily. It might be. We could have given it uh, an easier uh, test here, uh, but it, it, the query based uh, 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 identification help is 
is uh, good, but uh, you have to you have to work at it. It doesn't just tell you what the bird is accurately right away. Okay, so what's behind door number three? What's our third way to query Merlin about uh, a, a bird identification? Well, it's the it's the heart of this program. It's the it's by far the most useful. Uh, part of this program and that's the uh, photo ID okay now th this is uh, where Merlin really shines I think we'll test it and see but it's also where the use of this Merlin app gets a little trickier than simply looking at the list of possible birds in your area or doing a, a three-step query to get an idea of what your bird is now Merlin wants a photograph of the bird and it will identify the bird uh, for you. So let's see how this works. Merlin wants uh, a picture of the bird. And this gets tricky because you have to get a picture from a camera to, to Merlin. And it's a phone app. And it's, uh, in my experience, it's, it's challenging to get the picture to the Merlin app on your phone. Now the easiest way, if you're in a park and it's it's a, a tame waterfowl right in front of you, take a picture with your cell phone, and it, it, and I'll show you. This is what it will let you do. So uh, photo ID, and then take a photo would be take a picture of the bird. But what you can actually do, we're going to do take a photo, uh, and then it tells you the sort of photo that it wants. And, and this is what a lot of people do. They take a picture of a picture. So this is the computer screen that I, I've uploaded a picture of a Siskin to the screen. It's a pretty good picture of a Siskin, although it's, in, it's a, a straight on view. So maybe this will be challenging for Merlin. But now we're gonna take a picture of the screen and then we're gonna uh, use that photo. And it wants you to position it in the center. So we'll get it positioned accurately and uh, this is uh, confirmed location and date uh, uh, March 19th so it's yes confirmed we're it's still at the location we told it and this time it it nailed the bird uh, pine siskin the photo application on uh, Merlin has gotten uh, uh, very good um, well I let's just let's give it credit it's excellent um, and and it's only in it, uh, a couple generations of uh, improvement in this is this is new technology and rapidly developing technology and it's already gone from pretty good mediocre to uh, surprisingly good uh, so I think to really assess this we need to go to the field and I'll show you how a lot of birders use the back of their camera to do this and so that's what we're going to do. Let's let's go outside and and try this out in, in the field. Okay, uh, here we are in the field. Uh, I'm at Bobby Harrison Lake. This is a an interesting little spot in Chilton County, Alabama. Um, it, this part of Alabama really um, is lacking in waterfowl generally, but this lake has a resident flock of 50 mallards in it. And for that reason, it pulls in a lot of uh, waterfowl compared to anywhere else in this region. Um, and so this is a good place to test our uh, photo identification option on uh, Merlin. So I'm here early. It's just at sunrise. It's a cloudy morning. It's dark. Uh, I'm, I'm facing east, so the ducks are mostly backlit. And so um, the, the pictures are not great. Uh, so let's see how Merlin does. So um, I've uh, I've shot a couple uh, uh, photos already. Uh, there's a bald eagle sitting on a post over here. Uh, it's it's silhouetted. It's, it's actually a, a reasonably difficult ID for a human observer. There's the waterfowl. There's female mallards I photographed, and fish crows are flying around. A uh, fish crow, of course, I don't think you can identify them visually. I certainly can't. I got them by sound. And uh, and, and so I, that's what I want to start with. Let's see how... Uh, uh, let's see how the Merlin app does with a, uh, a, a fish crow. So I've got this uh, 
uh, image of a fish crow on my uh, camera, flying fish crow, and we are now going to take a picture of the picture, picture of the back of my camera. Okay, so we, we did that, use this photo, and we're going to zoom in on the fish crow, and we're going to see what it says. Uh, it's uh, uh, March 20th, we're at the correct location, and it got it, fish crow. I, I'm really quite amazed that it didn't even have American crow fish crow. I, I'm actually curious how it did that. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, uh, this is uh, a female mallard in a, uh, in a, uh, a not a very good position. Uh, so let's do our photo ID again. Take a photo. And we're at the, the location. So we're going to take a picture of this lousy picture of a, of a mallard. And I have my camera set so it's got a, a grid to help. Uh, compose the pictures, uh, but nonetheless, we're going to use it. It's just like sticks in the way of the bird. So here's mallard. Actually, we're giving it a lot of a lot of good information, and let's see what it does with this and mallard. This is just really amazing technology. The fish crow. I got to say, I'm blown away by uh, by the fish crow. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, next, let's let's uh, see how Merlin does with sound. Um, well, uh, that was my mistake. Uh, audio is not yet uh, an option in in Merlin. That's uh, that's going to come. Uh, Cornell's all over uh, a collection of, of bird sounds. They already have the software developed to identify bird sounds for various programs they've got going. Uh, but right now, it's not. So your choices are. Uh, the just look at the list of birds in your area, which that's not a little thing. That's good the uh, Tell Merlin what you're seeing and it'll help you try to decide what the bird is or give it a photo and obviously I'm very very impressed with uh, the identification algorithm they've got for photos uh, the, the fact that that uh, That Merlin identified that flying fish crow is just staggering Maybe we should have uh, repeated that three or four times to see if it could do it every time, but it did it. So it's good. Uh, it's really exciting that this is that this is working so well. Now a few things. Uh, I, I messed up a few things. Um, first of all, I actually didn't give it a location uh, for those last for that lake uh, segment. Uh, I thought it had maintained a, an Alabama location, but it didn't. So that makes it even harder. <laughs> I guess it was doing the whole continent, and it still identified fish crow. We handicapped it even more, and it got fish crow. So it's it's awesome. Another thing is at the end, uh, we didn't do this, and we should have. It says, "Is this your bird?" And and then y you should tell it yes or no because you're actually training it. That's how it's gotten so good. Uh, it's getting information from the users of Merlin and users of eBird, and so do that. A answer the question at the end, we didn't do it. Uh, is this your bird? Yes, we should have said yes. Okay, one final thing about that. Uh, that's how a lot of birders use Merlin, uh, is to take a picture of their computer screen once they've gotten their their pictures processed, or take a picture of their camera in the field. If you're taking a picture of a bird with telephoto lens, you bring it up in the back of the camera like we did, and then take a cell phone picture through the Merlin app of that picture. Okay, the last uh, option is if you go to photo ID and instead of take a picture, choose a picture, then it'll go to your photo library. So this will be all the photos you took with your iPhone plus all the photos you've downloaded or accessed through other means. Okay, now coincidentally, while I was out bird watching in Chilton County yesterday, at our uh, research site here in Auburn, my grad student um, uh, actually captured a, a a mystery sparrow. She she had a guess at what it was, but she wasn't sure. And so, and she sent me a picture. And so, we're going to now ask Merlin what that bird is. So, this was a, a bird uh, that was in uh, Lee County, Alabama. We, we both thought it looked like a clay-colored sparrow. That's a really rare bird uh, in the winter 
in its river in anywhere in Alabama, but especially central eastern Alabama, that's a rare bird. So uh, this time we're, we ask it what it is, where we've got the date, and we're going to um, uh, change it to Auburn, Alabama. We're going to give it a location this time. That's what we didn't do last time. And now let's see what it says about this bird. And sure enough, clay-colored sparrow. And that, that was not a good picture, wasn't a good angle on the bird. And anyway, I'm very impressed with this uh, uh, photo software. So in this time, we're going to say, yes, that is my bird. And then if you wanted to, um, uh, you could then go and, and do more stuff uh, uh, on eBird. Or you go back to Merlin and, and keep, um, uh, keep uh, doing Merlin activities. Okay, I just wanted to wrap up. Um, Merlin is a tremendous tool uh, for for any birder, really, but it, it's especially useful for for beginning birders. I would strongly recommend frequently looking at that list of most common birds in in all of the places you're visiting when you're a beginning birder. Um, you know, bird books are thick. It's really hard to assess what's really around your area. A lot of birds, you'll be in the range of a lot of birds that you will essentially never see. And so that list of, of most likely birds will really help to focus your, um, your observations. If you, I should have mentioned that, I didn't really know about it. I should have mentioned that in my introduction to birding. If you're watching a feeder, not sure what the birds are at your feeder, start with that list of most likely birds. Your feeder birds are probably that. Okay, uh, if you never use cameras and you just don't get pictures of birds, uh, Merlin's not going to be all that useful beyond that list of, um, uh, of, uh, of birds of your area. The query-based section of Merlin, as we saw when we tried to identify a goldfinch, uh, telling Merlin we were looking at a, a white and brown bird, um, you know, it, it's limited. It, it's not surprising. We're not giving it much information. It doesn't have much to go on. And I'll tell you, th this is my experience too. I mean, it's not just Merlin, it's, it's Dr. Hill. When, when my students come up and say, Dr. Hill, I saw a bird, it was about medium size and it was, uh, it was uh, mostly brown and I think white and it was uh, in the bushes. You know, <laughs> that's, I just start with the list of birds. You know, it's a, you try to get more, but a beginning person, all the things you want to know about it, how long was the tail, what was it doing, they, they don't remember, they didn't notice. So um, this is a challenge for uh, either an algorithm or a, a human mentor trying to help someone identify a bird they saw and trying to remember what they saw about it. Okay, so that's limited. The photo application's gotten really good. Um, now, I was going to end this by saying that uh, over the last few years, I've seen people... Uh, claim rare birds. I saw a rare bird, and and when they were asked for justification, they say, "Well, Merlin identified it," and it, they treat it like drop the mic, end of story, nailed it. If Merlin said it was this rare bird, and I used to say, "No way, you can't do that." Merlin's a starting point. You say Merlin suggested it was a rare bird, and then you're going to post it as a possible rare bird, and let other people assess it and come to a conclusion. But Merlin's now, <laughs> Merlin's one of the experts. Merlin's going to have an opinion that matters when it's nailing flying fish crows and stuff. So I don't think you should treat a Merlin ID as a definitive, absolutely definitive identification, but you should definitely post it on eBird and mention that your identification was helped by Merlin. Merlin uh, corroborated what you're saying the bird is. Post your photos, always put your pictures up too. And, um, and and then let the experts weigh in. But Merlin, <laughs> Merlin's gotten really good at this. <laughs> it's not surprising. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's got a lot of information. It's fed a lot of pictures, a lot of stuff to match any, any new picture to. And um, it's doing a good job of it. Okay, so hopefully this has been useful for you. Uh, I think definitely use Merlin. I'm going to start using it more. I didn't know it was that good. You know, it'll help me uh, uh, narrow down. And if it if it suggest, if I'm already looking at a bird, I think is a rare bird. I'm a little ambiguous. And Merlin says yes. You're right. It was that rare bird. I'll feel way better about calling my rare bird. So I think all of us can 
can benefit uh, uh, from Merlin. Okay, well, if you like this uh, series, uh, please uh, hit the like button and think about subscribing. I'll try to be posting uh, at least a couple uh, new videos a month. Okay, everybody, get out there with your Merlin app and see some birds. Thank you.